Welcome to another edition of BeerAmerican.tv. I'm Paul Leone with John Pinkerton. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. It's all right. <laughs> it's okay. You'll catch up. Oh, hi, John. And we have a, a, a very special guest with us today, the uh, local beer consigliere, uh, David Little, uh, who is also oh. the reluctant president of the Savannah Brewers Club, which he can get into <laughs> later. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's but true. we've got a lot of great <laughs> fall-related beers, beers that would go well with uh, the holidays, the cool Christmas of the weather, except here in Savannah when it's still 75 degrees or whatever. And, uh, we're, and we're not just talking about Christmas beers either. No, we're talking about That's holiday right. beers. I'm holiday. These are being politically correct and saying holiday beers. We'll do the Christmas beers later. Yeah, the, the, these uh, are these are these this, are when I have a turkey. This is the stuff I want. You can almost call this a Kwanzaa beer. A Kwanzaa beer. All right. Well, it's a Kwanzaa beer. But yeah, there we go. David we go. Uh, brought this to my attention. And David, if you want to go ahead and talk about it, Brother Thelonious. Brother Thelonious. Um, well, Brother Thelonious, famous uh, you know jazz musician, but uh, this brewery in California, North Coast, North Coast, um, uh, has got a relationship with the Thelonious Institute. Mm -hmm. Uh, which actually raises money and brings kids in to to uh, allow them to spend time in the in the uh, uh, learning about jazz mu music. Um, so they brewed a beer. They thought, okay, brother, you know, Thelonious Monk, Monk, what kind of beer should we do? So they brewed a, uh, a Belgian, a strong Belgian dark beer, uh, named it after brother Th or uh, Thelonious Monk. You know, called it Brother Thelonious, and uh, uh, proceeds from uh, each of the each of the, all the sales go to the the, uh, the institute. Let's categorize as a dark, strong ale, and it's a big beer at 9.4 percent. It is. Uh, and so let's go ahead and pop it open. And, and I've, I've never had this before. You obviously do, do have. Do I get to do this one? If you, if you, well, whatever. Let's whatever. do them both. Uh, yeah, do them both. Ooh. Let's see. Yeah. It's gonna be like the Fourth of July. So who can, who can, who can do it the fastest? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I guess. Wait a minute. Well, we could do it. The, who's the slowest? That'd be better. But it would take a long. You know, Here. I'm going to be are crude, you, are you, are you and David's going to be more of a... No, oh, uh, no, I'll do it the right way. You do it the other uh, way. Uh, eye protection. Oh, oh. yeah. Uh, See, that's not politically correct, or not not politically correct, but it's not beer. The correct way to beer. pop a yeah, core. It's not proper. So David will do the honors since he brought the beer to the table. I should be more respectful, being that I'm sort of the beer guy. Part now, is this, is this a year-round beer that you do year-round? Uh, yeah, we, we, yeah, it's, it's, it's around year-round, and I think it's good to drink year-round. So Really, even in the summertime? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's a nice thing about high alcohol. You know, you get a bit a lot of high alcohol in you. You, you start kind of sweating a little bit, and it, it actually cools you off. We don't need any help with that in Savannah, Georgia. No, no, that's true. That's true. It is a beautiful so, you know, color. But one of the things that uh, I've noticed from watching some of our videos is that um, oftentimes... Uh, you know, I'm doing the little color observation, but I'm, you know, it doesn't really translate very well in the video. But uh, so my goal is to be a little bit more descriptive here. But so I mean, it is side, so. just a beautiful, rich kind of mahogany you know, color. You know, John, it'd be really great if somebody had a flashlight right now and we could kind of shine it through the. Well, <laughs> as a matter of fact, oh, where'd that come from? <laughs> and I just want to point out, first of all, this is not one of those like geeky like. Flashlights is specifically designed for uh, looking at beer color. I don't do this as a rule, because, but I am geeky enough to wear a flashlight. But it's part of my job, for crying out loud. Right. My wife calls it another edition of the Bat Belt. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I can definitely but taste the strength beautiful. of this beer. I mean, it's, uh, but it's very easy to drink. Like you were saying, it's not like uh, I get that boozy smell uh, to it a little bit, um, and, but it went down real easy. Does this, does this one spend any time in wood? Uh, no, this one does not. Wow, it's almost got a little bit of that, yep. uh, uh, like, vinous quality that, I mean, it's definitely, it definitely uh, has some aged quality to it. Right. Um, right. What are some of your tasting notes? I get plum. I get, um, actually, I get a little bit, of, well, I get the alcohol. There's a, there's a little bit of alcohol bite. Yeah, I'm with you on the kind of raisiny thing. There's a touch of like the raisiny thing. Yeah, leather. it reminded me a little bit of the raison d'etre, just a little bit. The dogfish does, just a little bit. This raison d'etre. Raison. This is a little drier. Mm -hmm. it yes, finishes absolutely. A little, it finishes, finishes a little bit more. Yeah, right? I think so as well. I love it. Like I say, this is uh, you know uh, when we were talking about season. You know, this this season as we're coming up into autumn, but you know with a with a plate with a roasted turkey and some stuffing. This one really, uh, you know, the just really scrubs the palate after you. This this has that complete dynamic. Remember, I was talking about the EKG thing. Mm -hmm. But what's lovely about this is that you get uh, a really nice upfront kind of a uh, lot of 
a lot of big stuff going on with the, with, like you said, the plum or raisin, whatever you want to call that, some fruit, um, some kind of earthy tones there. And then, um, I don't know, it's going to take most of this bottle to really get the full evaluation. <laughs> I, I, think, don't, but, I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's some nice stuff going on in the middle. It's not just a, a flat line to the end either. But at the end, there's this brightness, and uh, I, I want to say some acidity to, to it, and that, that provides that, you know, if you want to visualize it on an EKG, you've got that big note up front, you've got some stuff going on, and then at the end, you've got at least a nice little spike to, uh, to really bring it home. It, it, it provides that da-da! <laughs> yeah, but when you say thing. spike, though, it doesn't like, it's not like, oh, spike oh, no, no, in the no, head. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, that's what I want to clear. I mean, but it's, it's just a, nice. It's a, yeah, it's a dynamic. It's a rewarding finish. Yeah, but, absolutely. But, uh, Ooh. Would be what I would say. Did I, I, like do, did I do all right? right? I'm going to use that. With a rewarding finish. It finishes well. So. I like to it's a happy it. ending. Oh, that's something oh, dear. Else. I'm sorry. <laughs> did I go there? I'm sorry. <laughs> that, was a, that was a sweet water plug right there. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I'm, I won't. Well, I, I really like this beer. It wasn't really what I thought it would be. I actually thought it was going to be much stronger. When they, oh, you know, it's a strong ale, and you know, you expect it'll, this uh, monstrous beer, and I didn't get that. Uh, it, it's it'll nice. walk up. It's it'll walk up behind oh, you. Oh, I'm hit sure you in the back it will. Of the head, so, but know. I've had beers where you taste them, and it's like you know, throwing back a bottle yeah. of yeah. booze. You oh know? yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, well, and I don't get that with this. One yeah. of the true marks of mm -hmm. a great, say, strong Belgian beer, or even like a German Doppelbach, one of the true uh, marks of quality there is that you don't necessarily taste the alcohol. Right, right, that, that it right. kind of like, you know, it's that whole thing like you stand up from your bar stool after a little while and like, oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it, it should be, as I say, well integrated. Yeah. As a lot yeah. of brewers say, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, that's, that's, it's easy to make a beer that tastes alcoholic. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's actually, that's almost way a mistake, too easy. Really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's so, I mean, to, to be able to do a higher alcohol that's, that's got the flavors that so do we? You, you asked the question earlier, right? This is not a barrel aged, or, or uh, you know, so it's not getting residual alcohol from no. uh, any nope. being fermented in whiskey barrels or anything like that. It's just, it's wonderful beer. I mean, yeah, and, that's and, that, and that's not really the point of putting yeah. beer in a in a bourbon barrel either. I mean, you're not really trying to pick up alcohol. The whole but idea. But it does with, add to the flavor a little bit, right? Oh, or absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. anytime you put beer in in wood, you're going to get right. some of that wood flavor, even if it's a barrel that's been pretty well seasoned. In other words, a lot of that. Uh, oakiness has been already extracted, or mm -hmm. vanilla, or whatever you want to call that. But uh, a big part of that is the chemistry of aging. I mean, there's there's this elaborate chemistry that I couldn't even possibly go into. But uh, micro but oxidation. Micro oxidation. But the, the biggest issue there is that you have a, a sort of chemical uh, uh, synergy of some of these components that start out pretty rough that come together to be quite beautiful right. in the end. Right. And, uh, and that doesn't happen as readily. It can't, I mean, you, you still get aging effects, even if you age it in stainless, but you're not getting quite as much because uh, the wood, with that whole micro uh, aeration thing, oxygen is generally a bad idea, but this micro aeration, this very slow aeration effect, um, helps some of these, catalyzes, if you will, some of these reactions to take place. And, uh, but they've obviously done a, a masterful job, even without oak aging here. This would this would be a, a beer that'd be really neat to, to see coming out of like uh, uh, a red wine barrel or something oh, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, David, thank you very much for bringing Brother Thelonious to the <coughs> table. My, my, my I think pleasure. that uh, we will definitely be inviting David back in future episodes of BeerAmerica.tv. So, but if you have any questions for uh, John or myself, it's uh, Pink at BeerAmerica.tv and Paul at BeerAmerica.tv. You can also friend me up on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. So those are two important. Uh, uh, things to do, try to, try to get it. And also on the website, um, enter your email address and every time a new episode comes out, um, you'll get an alert and it, the email addresses don't get published out or anything like that. You'll just get an alert and say, hey, there's a new episode coming out. And we're trying to put out more than one a week. We're trying to, to do more uh, because the interest is there. Uh, we're definitely getting a good amount of, uh, of, of interest. You're getting phone calls, I'm getting phone calls, I'm getting emails from, from Portland, Oregon, uh, from New York, from all these places. So this is really a good thing that's happening, and uh, we appreciate you joining us. So, gentlemen, look, cheers. cheers. Oh man, I don't have much beer left. Uh, oh, Jesus, yeah, I might have to pour more. Right, Slush. <laughs>